Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for hanging out with us today at our warehouse sale, our first virtual warehouse sale. Uh, we were so disappointed we weren't gonna be able to do our actual sale uh, in Oregon. It's always been so much fun. So many of you travel so far to come. We look forward to seeing all of you. It's just, it's such a highlight of the year for us. So it was really disappointing we weren't gonna be able to do that, but you know what? The virtual warehouse sale, I mean, it's, it's the second best thing. So actually more of you are able to participate and I just, you know, we, we all just appreciate it so much. So I have a watercolor project for you. Um, I have to be involved as much as I can and this is what I get to do. So I get to uh, inspire you and teach you things and and I have a really fun watercolor project, Christmas, of course, and my favorite, a snowy scene. So um, bear with me now as I change my camera around and we will get going on this project. Okay, I've got my camera situated here. Let me just get this down low enough so that you can see it. So here's my little project. Uh, I have a little grandson who's about this age. He's just turned two and he's just so cute. This little guy reminds me so much of him. So I've got this little snowy, snowy scene going here. I've got the little dog. Uh, he also has a little dog like this. And I just thought this would be a really, really fun project to do. So here's what we're gonna need. I have gotten my little wagon out that I haven't used in a long time, but I love this stamp so much. This always reminds me of Christmas, even though when I did it, it was a garden theme, but it always reminds me of Christmas and I always picture it with a little tree in it. So we're gonna use that. And then I've got this little dog here. I just think he's so cute. It looks like a little uh, golden retriever. And so we're gonna put him into the scene. And then here's our little snowy guy right here. He's actually got a little snowball in his hand, but we're gonna set him in this little wagon and have him be holding on to this little tree right here. So, you know, these things are really versatile. You can do a lot of things. And that's what's really fun about these projects is that I can show you different ways that you can use these stamps. And it just, it sort of opens up a whole new world when you think about different ways uh, that you can use them. You don't have to necessarily use them the way that they're intended on the package. Uh, and I see so many people who have caught on to that and just put things in all different compositions and I love it because these really are made to be used as a collection. So the more stamps you buy, the more options you have with them and the more ways that you can kind of mix and match. So I am going to put a little tree in there. Now you could use any of these fur boughs. I picked the simplest one and that is this little, uh, this little one right here. So there are two sizes and I've actually used the small one. And that's the little tree that's going inside the wagon right here. So let's get going on this little project. And so I've got my, um, let me just adjust my camera a little bit more here. Make sure I've got this straight. It looks like that's just tipped. I think there we go. I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so we're gonna start out by doing a basic image. And you know, we don't need, you know, these little snowy scenes, they don't need a lot of colors. Now I really focused on the red on the, um, the wagon. So I don't have a lot of red in the rest of the theme. I really wanna focus on that as the focal point. So uh, we're gonna use the red and the green and then keep the other colors really simple. So the browns and then of course our blue background. We're gonna use our Molotov. Um, little mask pan also. So let's start out with, uh, with that basic image and we're gonna start out with the wagon. And we're gonna ink this in two colors. So we're gonna use the dark brown. This is the dark brown, so the 969. And we are just going to ink this up, just like this, over the whole thing. And then go back over it again with the dark blue. This is the 565. And we're using these two colors because this little wagon is metal. So we're gonna do this, the blue as the second color, so that the, um, actually the primary color. And now we're gonna stamp it off because this is way too dark and we want that to be much lighter into the background. So let me just stamp this right into the center, just like that. And a little bit lighter is good. That's really good to do it, just a little bit lighter. Otherwise you get too dark of an outline on the outside, especially when you're putting it against a white background. So now I'm going to take um, a piece of masking tape, just like this. And I'm just gonna take tear a piece off like this and just cover the wagon 
right here on the side. And I always leave a little edge here just so that I can see where the, where the parameter of the wagon is. So I can see that it ends right here. So it just helps when you go to line things up. And now we're gonna put this little guy into, uh, into the wagon. And of course, we're going to use a stamp positioner because the guesswork on this uh, would just be too hard to do. Uh, okay, so, and I'm going to stamp it off first. So I'm gonna stamp him off. We want him to be very light. And then I'm going to just get my stamp positioner and stamp this into the corner like this. And we're gonna set him right in here. So just like this, maybe down just a little bit like that, right on the edge. And I'm just gonna huff on it before I stamp it. And that looks pretty good right there. So now I can take this, this little tape off and I've got my little guy inside the wagon, which is exactly where I want him to be. And let's go on with the little dog. So I do like to get all of my basic images in first and then I can complete the background and do all my details around it. So let's do this little guy. And we're gonna use the brown with him too. And I'm just gonna ink him all up. and stamp him right into the corner like this. And I'm gonna put him right here. And I just, I feel like he is, his little chin should be right on that wagon. He's just watching everything that's going on inside here. Just looking at his little boy. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna stamp him off a little bit. I, I know it's off camera, but I just stamped him off a little bit just so that he's not too dark. So that looks good right there. I think that's a good spot for him. Okay, so now we can go ahead and add our color, add the water to him, uh, to these images, and get started filling in the details. So actually, let me just move my palette over here, like this, and my water out of the way. Okay, here we go. So I dipped my brush in water and pinched it off so that I get it really, um, really saturated. And then I'm just gonna start out by pulling the color out of the lines. And this is just the starting, the starting stage. So we're just, we're just getting started with this process. So just the very, uh, just the very basics right now. Uh, don't do anything to the face. Uh, we don't have to do anything with that right now. Just keep it really, really light. And then the little wagon, I'm just gonna come under here because this has got a, a little lip hanging over. So I wanna make sure that we show that. And then these wheels in the background are going to be darker. And we'll get more color on here also as we go. Now the little, the little puppy, I wanna keep his face you know, especially since he's just, he's looking up like this, we wanna keep the top of his head uh, where his little face is, we wanna keep that really light, really light. And I think I'll give him some little white, little white feet, maybe a little white belly. And I'm just in the very beginning stages here. Uh, the top of his back, I wanna see a little highlight on there. And we'll come back in and add a little more color later. Okay, so let's let's just continue on with this little guy. And I'm gonna, you know, on the original here, I put a little scarf around his neck. Uh, it's really fun to do little details like that, and I like to challenge you to do stuff like that. Uh, it's not hard, and do it with a pencil. So first, draw it in, and you're just gonna draw in a couple of lines here on his his neck, just like this. And then, you know, if the pencil is showing up later, you can just erase it. And then you're gonna make a little section under here. And then let's just make another one over here. So we've got a little scarf on his neck. So let's go ahead and add some color, some red. Now this is the number 885 red. And I'm just gonna take a little of this color now and brush this on. So you wanna stay in each section even though you've drawn these on with a pencil, you wanna do each section individually. So leave a little space there. And 
and then this one out here. And actually we can make some little, so I've got that same little marker, the red. And I've got his little scarf colored in. So I'm just gonna add now a little more color to him. And I think I'm gonna use the warm brown. And that is this one right here, the number 947. So I'm just gonna add that to my palette. And just take some of this color here and just start out by putting this color on. Start out where it would be the darkest. So that would be on the sides and work your way over to the center. And leave that little highlight on the top. Uh, try not to, to hit that red. You don't wanna hit that red. So kind of stay away from that color. I don't want that to bleed out. And then I think I'll just, I'll make this tail a little darker. And then let's make his ears a little darker. And then we want to bring some of this color over, but we really, really want to keep this area light, our little faces. And we can come back in here with some more color too. So as soon as this dries, we can come back in with another pass and darken this a little bit more, especially these, you know, his little, um, his little legs in the background. So these two legs back here, these are going to be a little bit darker than the ones in the foreground. Like that. So I'm going to take a, um, I am going to take a black. So this is just a very fine tip black and I'm going to just really darken in this little eye and his nose. And you can see how that just really, um, just really pops him out. You can see his little face just pops out. Okay, so let's keep going now. Let's go on to um, finish up this little guy. And I'm gonna use some of this same color. And I'm going to put some of this color onto his little pants. And again, I'm staying in each section. So that's really, really important to do. Never drag your brush over any lines. You always want to stay in each section and apply the color so that you leave those lines there. And then uh, let's add some green now to our palette. This is a cool green. So this is number uh, 249. Love this green. And we're gonna add some of this green now to his little sweater. And again, stay in each section. Now see, he's, he's kind of bent over, so we wanna see a highlight on his back. You don't, want to, you don't want to brush that color all the way to the top edge. And, you know, always start out light. You can always add more color to it. So you want to just start out light. You know, the more passes that you make, the darker that color is going to get. So just, you know, take your time and be patient and just... Go back over it again. Leave those highlights and stay in each section. That's really the key. Okay, so let's go on now. Let's add some red now to him. <clears throat> then we're gonna add some red to his little hat. And again, stay in each section. It's always good to leave a little white because it, it sort of catches the light and that's what gives you uh, dimension to your image. You know, when you do that, it really, really makes a difference. If you color it all, all in solid, I know I say this a hundred times, but if you color it all in solid, it's gonna be flat. Okay, so let's change out this color a little bit and let's add a little black to it just so we can change the color of his little mittens. 
and I'm just going to change. And you can see how this, this really changes the color of the brown. And then just brush this color on. So he's got one little mitten here, and then he's got another one here. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back here. His little his little sweater is, is pretty dry now, so I'm just gonna come back in, in and add some detail. Now his, his little arm, you know, is rounded, so you wanna make sure that if you add some detail like that, you put an arc in it. So not a straight line. And the same as you're doing his, his little back here too. It really, really makes a difference. All those little things really, really make a difference. Because you can see that it is rounded. And then let's just add a little detail to his little gloves as well. So I'm just using the dark brown. This is the, just the dark brown that we started out with. And now I'm just gonna take uh, a little color out of the lines on his face. So we don't need to add a lot of color here. Now this is where you can uh, make this little guy uh, just, you know, personal to you. So you can make his skin color whatever you want it to be. I'm going to make him just a little bit darker. And then maybe just add a little pink to his cheeks because he's out in the cold, so his little cheeks are going to be pink. And then I think I'll leave his little, the little palm on top of his hat. I think I'll leave that white. So I'm just gonna add a little blue because you know we never leave anything just white. We always have to put a shadow on it. And that makes it look a little more three-dimensional. Okay, so let me just hold this up a little bit closer so that you could see, see the highlight on his back, see the colors, just really, really simple. And actually, uh, I think I'll just I'll put a little detail on his hat as well. So I'm just using the fine tip of that red marker. There we go. So you can see uh, his little face, his little hat. And let's go ahead and go on now. So the next step, I think I'm going to put in my, uh, my masking fluid so that it can dry while we're doing the rest. And I'm gonna shake it up, this is the Molotov. And I'm just going to add my snow in the background. I'm gonna put my little tree in here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my snow in. And I'm just gonna put this all around. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to the little wagon and add some color here. So we're gonna do some more of that red. I'm just gonna add a little more to my palette here. And just take some of this color and just start out. Now, again, you wanna, you wanna keep in each section and you wanna see that highlight on the top. So the very top of the image is always going to have a highlight. And then back around here, so we're gonna stay in each section. So we're gonna leave that edge. And just try not to color it all in, you know, 100%. And in here, you know, on the sides, the sides are always gonna be a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off really good because you know whenever you use red, uh, red tends to wanna to just stay in your brush. So really, really be careful about um, cleaning your brush out when you go to another color after you've been using red. So I'm going back to the green now 
And I'm just gonna add some green now to the little wagon wheels. So we make this little wagon really Christmassy looking. Let's add some color in here. And of course you can change this out as much as you want. You can make this wagon whatever color you want it to be. The more sets I add, the, the uh, you know, some of these older sets I haven't used in so long and I just love them. So it's really fun to get them out again. And I just, I need more time to do stuff like that so that I can mix and match. You know, there, you know, the projects don't get harder as they go. So in other words, you know, as new ones come out, they're not more challenging. They're, you know, they're the same difficulty. So you never have to be intimidated by uh, new projects that come out. You know, it's the same technique, it's the same difficulty. You should be able to just jump in and do any project. So some of these older ones are just as simple. So I've got some black now, and I'm going to add some black now to the wheels. And I'm going to leave a highlight on the top. So just like this, and then we'll come back in and add a little more color in here. The same with this down here. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and it looks like our uh, masking fluid is dry, so we're gonna put that little tree in. And here's the little fur bow. Just move this out of the way here. So I'm gonna ink this up <clears throat> with a green. this on my stamp and I always, you know, I should mention this, I always put things into the corner. I think it's much easier to position and see where it's going than if you put it into the center. And you know, it's a, um, it's a little bit of muscle memory too. So when you take this off and you place it back here, you're gonna remember how it stamps. So if every time you place it on here, it's in a different place, it's really hard to get the hang of exactly how it's gonna stamp. So I really, I think that really makes it easier to do that. So I'm using a green, now I'm just, I'm using the number 177 green. And I'm just gonna start out here on the top and then get it one, two, and three like this. So you can kind of decide how big you want this little, the tree to be inside the wagon. And I think that's pretty good. Can't be too big of a tree. He wouldn't be able to get it in the wagon. So now we can add some water to it. Uh, be really careful that you don't get too much water on this uh, because we really, really want to be able to see that this is a fir tree, a Christmas tree. So we don't want to take away too many of the lines in the texture. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to take my, uh, my fine tip now. This is that dark green. And I'm just gonna come around this little wheel like this and just darken this edge. Like that, and then I'm gonna take that black again, this really tiny fine tip black and fill in this area. just really helps to go in and get some of this detail back again. You know, when you add the water to it, sometimes you wash out the detail. So it really helps to go back in and do that. Okay, so let's keep going here. We're gonna put in our background in our sky. So we need some blue, a bunch of blue. And that would be that dark blue. So I'm just gonna get a bunch of this color on here. And I wanna show that that snowy area. So I'm gonna start out just by making a little line here, just like this, and maybe along here, and then maybe out to here. So that's our little horizon line. And then we're gonna brush in the sky above this line. Now be careful you don't touch the image that you've just done. 
uh, because you will bleed out that color. So be really careful about that. And you know, when I'm putting this color on, I'm just, I'm really kind of just pushing it around. So I'm not really brushing it. Um, and I know some people have trouble with the sky because you're, you're getting those brush marks in. Um, so it really does help to, to kind of do it this way. So just put that color on and then just take your brush and just kind of push it around. You don't really see brush lines. You know, make sure you get enough water on here also so your brush isn't too dry. And we're just gonna getting this color on. So I'm being really careful not to touch uh, any of the lines that I've already done. Make sure nothing bleeds out. And I can get in pretty close to this little tree. And then in here to our little horizon line. And then we take that masking fluid off, we'll be able to see that, um, see the little white snowflakes background. And you can, you know, you can always wash it out. So if you get, you know, an area then in that looks a little dark or blotchy, um, just get your brush wet and just um, use just plain water. Just kind of clean it out. Okay, so let's go in now and do the, uh, the little shadow underneath. So we're just going to brush in a little area in here under the wagon like this, uh, where this little handle goes. And then right here where this little dog is, he's going to have a little shadow under him. Just like this. And then let's just put in uh, some little footprints. You know, it's going to be a lot of footprints around here where these, these little guys have been. And don't, you know, overthink this too much, you know. Uh, sometimes snow can be really stressful because you're just you're not sure where to put all the lines and you know really uh, less is is more so don't overwork it and don't you know overthink it I think that looks pretty good just gonna make sure I get enough color on here this little guy Little bit more maybe on his so I'm taking a little bit more of this brown here and just putting a little more color on so this area where his his eyes are this should be really really light okay that looks pretty good so I'm just taking a little bit more of this black and adding a little bit more onto the wheels here. Put that into the snow like that. And I think I can get, I should turn my palette around so you guys can see. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit more of the red In here and just add a little more red onto the wagon okay that looks pretty good so let's go ahead and take off uh, our masking fluid make sure everything is dry before you do this um, I've done this so many times to smear my ink um, by being too anxious to get the masking fluid off and then just um, just smearing everything Okay, so you can see that that comes off and you can see the snow into the background. Now this is where you can kind of look at everything and just see if um, your little guy is col colored in good. Make sure if you want to add anything else on here, you can. And I'm just putting a little more color in here. Nice little gloves. into his hat and I 
think he looks pretty good. Now I would go through and just add a ton of glitter in here. And I think I will uh, also add just a little bit of red in these areas where uh, I had the masking fluid. So we've got some little decorations on here. Now you can use your, your tiny brush too. So I'm doing all of this with my number four. And I think I'll just come in now with my fine tip and just go right underneath all of these little all of these little decorations. And this looks like it is about finished. That looks pretty good. Okay, so one last thing, of course, is to sign and date. And I will do that. Add some glitter to it and put it on a card or put it in a frame, of course, and give it away to someone. I hope you give this, a car, this card a try. Thanks for shopping with us. Hang out with us the rest of the day and there'll be more fun stuff to come.